the number one thing that 95% of swimmers are ignoring is what's going on swim fans in this video I'm gonna show you five of the most important numbers that every swimmer should be tracking I'm also gonna show you how to measure your progress over time and I'm gonna explain what test sets are how they work and how you can get the most out of them now the biggest mistake that I routinely see swimmers make is not testing themselves over and over on a specific set over a period of time and I don't mean a literal test like a school exam so put away your Scantron I think they still use those in any case I love the quote what gets measured gets improved and if you're not measuring anything then how can you see improvement so let's go ahead and talk about those five different metrics those five different numbers and I'm gonna explain in swimming terms how you can assess them we're gonna go through the test sets at the end of the video and I'm gonna bring in the my swim pro app so you can see a digital version of what these numbers actually look like in practice so the first one I want you to pay attention to is how fast do you swim so all these are sort of written as a question that you should be able to answer now this question how fast do you swim we'll add a question mark there we're talking about lap splits now this is really important to know what distance we're talking about so over a 25 meter distance or a 50 meter distance or a 100 meter distance how fast do you swim now I think this is probably the most obvious one if you're a swimmer even if you're not competing if you're just doing it for fitness you know the next one we'll talk about how far you swim which is distance that's important too but between these first two you should really know how far you're swimming and how fast you're swimming so to talk about this in another another layer deeper I actually want to pull up the my swim pro app so I have my account right here I'm gonna go ahead and screen share so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing right here now I'm gonna pull up an old workout that I did called the beast now this is a 2,000 yard workout 33 minutes now you will talk about heart rate and strokes per lap what all these graphs mean but I want to scroll down just to give you an overview of what the workout was now you can see here the main set was a 500 freestyle pull and then three 100s freestyle it looks like I descended those so let's go ahead and tap in on those three 100s freestyle and if you notice there is a split for each of those reps so you see a 114 then a 111 and then a 108 so those splits the answer to the question how fast do you swim on the first 100 I swam a 1 minute and 14 second I can also break it down and see individual lap splits so I can see the time for every 25 yards in this case it's a 25 yard pool and you can break it up just like that and I can see that on every single rep now if you're wondering how do I see these stats that I manually enter these no I didn't manually enter anything this workout was written in the my swim pro app and I synced it with my Apple watch and the workout was right there on my watch so I just basically followed the watch it's like a personal coach right there on your wrist and all of these splits were automatically measured for every single set of every single workout and we'll talk about that a little bit later but the first concept that I want you to really think about is how fast are you swimming and how fast are you going on every single set every distance every stroke now it can be a lot and overwhelming to try and track all of that so normally I'm just thinking about it in that specific set and then after the workout I can come back into the app and I can just go ahead and look at my stats and see what I did so for example this 500 freestyle which is my main set you can see my heart rate elevating we'll come back to that the number of strokes per lap that I was taking the lap splits swall score we'll talk about and then I can tap in here and I can see what my splits were on all 20 lengths of that 500 and as you can see I was averaging anywhere from 14 to 17 seconds so it's really important to just have an idea of how fast you're swimming now you might be thinking that's way too technical I don't want to have to worry about that I just want to swim back and forth that's totally fine but every now and then it's important to do what are called test sets and these are things that you can do the same set over and over and measure your progress over a period of time so we'll talk about test sets in just a little bit but let's go back to these five metrics so we already talked about how fast you're swimming and we have this beautiful set to go off as an example now let's talk about how far do you swim this is our distance that we're talking about and there's a lot more metrics beyond these five but I want to focus on like these core ones so when we're talking about distance we're really talking about how far are you actually swimming some people like to count how many laps they take how many how many lengths you can call a lap you know there and back that's one lap 
In this specific workout, The Beast, it's a 2,000 yard workout. So if I'm swimming in a 25 yard pool, that's, a, that's 80 lengths of the pool or 40 laps. And that's the way that it's being measured. So I can go back and look at my library of workouts and I can see my average workout is between 1,000 and 2,000 yards. I mostly swim in a yard pool. I can also look at my profile here and you can see all the different workouts I've done, the total distance I've done, how many hours. I have over 1,500 workouts logged in the My Swim app in my account. I've been tracking this for over seven years now, and I have a lot of experience with tracking a guided workout, so I have a good assessment of how fast I'm swimming over time. And there's plenty of other graphs and things in there that we can go into a little bit later. But let's go back to the workout so we know how far do you swim, and that's our distance, so that's another important metric. The third metric that I want you to pay attention to is how many strokes per length you take. Now this is really important depending on if you're in a 25 yard, meter or 50 meter pool because the, the length of the pool is really going to change all of these actually, but how, how fast you swim and how many strokes you take. The metric that we're calling it is a stroke count. So I'm going to go back and find that workout, which was called the beast. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back. Let me find the beast. Where is the beast? Okay, so I found the beast. And if we look at this workout, when we're talking about how many strokes per length I took, let's take a look at this first set, the 425s, 4125s freestyle. I can see strokes per lap, and I even have the information icon. This graph shows how many strokes you took per lap. And it's the y-axis is the duration of the workout. So you can see, for me at least, I have a pretty consistent lap count. I, I take anywhere from 10 to 15 strokes per length, depending on how fast I'm going. And on this particular set, it's no different. So you can see, on each of the reps, on the first one I averaged 13 strokes, then 13 strokes on rep number two, 12 strokes, 14. These are averages, so maybe Maybe you know, a stroke here and there can push it up or push it down. And this is also counting the number of strokes you're taking under the water. I like to count actually how many strokes you take when your arm comes out of the water. It's easier to count, but you're actually miscounting. You know, it's, it's okay, but you're actually taking one less stroke if you just count out of the water because you're not counting the part where you pull under the water. And if you're swimming with a smartwatch, it's going to track that underneath the water because it's tracking the full motion. Just an FYI to understand how the, the metrics are. And then you can see broken out by 20 there's five 25s and a 125. It's a lot of fives in that sentence. And so that's the third most important metric. Now the fourth is your swimming efficiency. Now if you're focusing on improving your technique, which we should all be trying to always improve our technique, this is our swimming golf. Now just like the game of golf, you want to have a lower number. The lower your number, the more efficient your stroke. Now the way you can actually see this, we actually have it as a graph in the My Swim Pro app, and you can see it right here, my swall score and you can tap on the information icon. So your swell score is for each lap normalized to 25 meters. And the way you calculate that, you take your stroke count and your lap split. The lower the number, the better. So I know that's like a lot of math and it's like, oh, I just don't wanna think, I wanna swim. That's why we chart it out for you so you don't have to think about it. But if you wanna be a nerd like me and you wanna understand how it's actually calculated, all you do is you take how many strokes you took in a 25 meter distance. So if you push off the wall and you take 10 strokes of freestyle, that number's gonna be 10, and then you add it to how long it took you to swim the same distance. So in that 25 meters, you did it in 10 strokes, and it took you 15 seconds. So that you add one to the other, 10 strokes plus 15 seconds, and your swell score is a 25. Now the swell score is really a number for you. So you can't say, you know, is my number of 37 good or bad? It's all relative to you. And if you can measure this over time, you can start to see your efficiency improve. Now it's difficult because if you just swim faster but you take more strokes, that number might actually go up. And if you swim really slow and you take very few strokes, the number could still go up because your time was slower. So it's a balance of how many strokes you take and how fast you're swimming. And that's why I love Swall. There's a lot of fun sets that you can do with that. So if we scroll down, we wanna look at one of these particular sets, like the 500. You can see my average Swall score was a 31 over the course. And you can see at the end, it kind of goes up. That's probably because my tempo was increasing and I was losing my efficiency over the course of this 500. Remember, the 500 is a painful, painful event here. So I happened to swim it. Where's my time? I swam it in a 548 
and I averaged 13 strokes per length, and my average swallow was a 31. My lap splits was a 15. Remember, this is a 25 yard pool, so we have to normalize it to a meter pool. So the swallow score is a great way to measure your overall efficiency. Hopefully that made sense. Make sure you rewind if it didn't, but that's the swallow score. And then the last one is your heart rate. So if I stay focused on this graph, you can see over the course of the 500, my heart rate just gradually increased which makes sense because I'm swimming continuously, not taking a break. Now, if you contrast that with the overall workout, if you look at the graph, you can actually see clear divisions on my heart rate graph when I go from set group to set group. So if you scroll down and we look at the actual set, the warm up was three different sets, and then I had a big break before I hit that 500. So if we scroll back up and we look at it, you can actually see on my heart rate graph, three distinct mountains, and then we have the big mountain that was uninterrupted just continuing to increase my heart rate all the way to 171 beats per minute. Then on the next set, I had a little bit of recovery. And then the next, what was the next set? Three 100s freestyle with fins where I went down to a 108. So I had like three little short mountains that came after that. And then a big drop off because there was a lot of rest for that set group, the last set group. And then on the last set group, what was the set? Four 50s freestyle. And if you scroll up, you can see at the end of the heart rate graph, very clear, four little mountains. They're not mountains, they're like hills at this point, but stick with me. That's how you can see your heart rate, and this is a great metric to see how hard you're pushing yourself. Now, the cool thing about the My Swim Pro app is you can actually see your heart rate in real time while you're swimming. So you can, yeah, you can look at it while you're swimming, but when you're at the wall between sets and between set groups, you can actually see where your heart rate's at, and that can moderate your effort level on the upcoming set. The My Swim Pro app will also tell you what the effort level should be. So if I scroll back here, you can see each of the sets are defined with a different color, and that shows up on the watch as well. So it's really important to measure all of these metrics when you're swimming. Now I talked about test sets a lot because these are an important way to measure your performance, and they're meant to be repeated multiple times over a period of time to compare results. So if you just do a test set once, it's like a nice to have, but the real value comes from doing it over and over and over. So all swimmers, I believe, can benefit from test sets, mostly because there's so many different kinds of test sets. I wanna talk about a few that I really like that are in the My Swim Pro app. And each test set has a different focus. So a test set might be focused on speed, might be focused on endurance, a specific stroke, or like ultra long capacity endurance. So let's talk about a few of those. So we have one that's in the My Swim Pro app called Need for Speed. And as the name implies, it's all about measuring your race pace performance. And we use this 100 time to actually calibrate everything that happens in the My Swim Pro app for freestyle. So for example, if you have a really fast seed time for your 100 freestyle, all the intervals on your workouts are gonna be a lot different than someone with a much slower time. For example, your time might be one minute and 20 seconds in the 100 meter freestyle, and that's awesome. Someone else's time might be three minutes. Your workouts are gonna be vastly different, and you use this measurement to see your progress over time. So the goal would be to go from a 120 to a 118 or a 116. You can actually see the test set in the My Swim Pro app. If I navigate to the coach, 1100 race pace, need for speed. You can see there's a warm up, a preset, and then the actual test set, you see it in pink here. Now the goal time for me, the coach is telling me, is to go under one minute, 59 seconds, and the interval is two minutes. So I think I can do that. If I actually go, because I've done this a few times now with the My Swim Pro app, if I go to my profile, I tap on performance, I can actually see my test set results, and I can actually see see my progress in this specific test set over time. So you can see when I first did it, it was the end of November and I went a 58 second. I tried it again, I went 55 seconds. Then I tried again, I went 53 and then 53 and I couldn't get faster than 53. So apparently my best time in a test set in the My Swim Pro app is 53 seconds in a 100. We also have another test set called the Endurance Challenge. Now similar to the Need for Speed test set, this is accompanied by a warm up, a preset, and then the main set itself is the test set. And this test set is focused on endurance. It's five 100s freestyle at a threshold, which means you're not gonna get as much rest, but you have to do five of them in a row. So there's a goal time for the 100, and there's an interval time, which are two different things. So you have to swim under the goal time, and then you have to swim also, obviously, underneath the interval. The goal time's always gonna be faster than the interval itself. So for example, if I have to do five 100s freestyle on the 110, my goal time might be a 106, and my goal is to hit that time
time on every single rep. Another test set in the MySwim Prep is the Endurance Challenge 2, which you can actually unlock after you do the first one. So you do 10 100s, whoop, I have that wrong here. <laughs> We're doing this live, folks. So 10 100s freestyle, also at threshold. So cool, you did five 100s on the 110 and you got under 106. Now you're gonna do 10 100s on the 110, try and get under 106. And as you go through this process, the app will actually learn from you and adapt, and that's how you can see your progress over time in the My Swim Pro app. Now just for fun, a few other test sets that are not in the My Swim Pro app, maybe they'll be coming shortly is the T30 set. Now this is an old school test set. Basically you just swim for 30 minutes and you see how far you can go. And the goal is to swim as far as possible and you do that once a month and you see how much further you can get. Another test set is a 3000 for time. So you'll actually do a 3000 meter swim. I just showed you my whole workout was 2000. Imagine doing a 3000 for time, not 3000 for, yeah, 3000 for time and you just see what you go. I've heard Michael Phelps has done a 10,000 for time and he went something like one hour and 55 minutes. Oh my God, can you imagine the pain of swimming for two hours at that speed? Incredible to go under two hours for 10,000 meters, but whoo -wee. Now you might be thinking, well, when do I do these test sets? How do I know when to do them? Don't worry, don't think, just swim. The MySwim Pro app and the MySwim Pro coach will automatically recommend which test set to do when. All you have to do, put your goggles on, put your cap on, and swim. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what questions you have down below in the comments. Check out the MySwim Pro app and happy swimming.